everyone. So my name is uh, Sam Dow. I am an application engineer from Microsoft. So uh, it's uh, it's my pleasure to speak with you today, and um, the uh, topic of uh, uh, my talk today will be on uh, solving partial differential equations in uh, Maple 18. So in this presentation, I'm gonna sh sharing a few uh, techniques uh, on uh, how to handle uh, partial differential equations in Maple. Uh, I'm sure that uh, many of you have uh, encountered partial differential equations in the work or, or study. So, uh, partial differential equations are very useful to describe a, a wide variety of phenomena. For example, heat transfer, uh, electrodynamics, uh, elasticity, um, uh, and, and uh, uh, the fluid flow. Um, so, um, I personally uh, have uh, dealt with the partial differential equation, the PD is quite a lot, uh, and I, I solve them um, the, for uh, heat transfers, the applications, and, and also uh, battery in battery models as well. So in, in Maple, um, so uh, in my presentation today, I was speaking back and forth between uh, uh, the slides and Maple worksheet um, uh, during my presentation. So I want to be showing you uh, uh, different techniques of uh, how to uh, solve partial differential equations in Maple. So what you see on the screen right now is uh, the Maple worksheet that I uh, pre-created, uh, which uh, consists of the, uh, the some uh, uh, Maple commands uh, that uh, allows me to uh, to solve the partial differential equations that I'm going to define here. Because of the limited time frame, uh, I will type some commands and I will uh, use. Uh, the, some of the commands that I, I, I pre-timed uh, in, in this maybe worksheet for, for solving the partial differential equations. So uh, the first step is um, I'm going to call the restart command to clear the memory. Uh, I'm, I will also need to um, define the partial differentials that I want to solve. So the PDE that I want to solve, I call it, um, I, I assign it to the variable that is called PDE. And I will call the diff uh, command. It's a maple command for calculating the uh, differentiation of the function. Uh, and the function that, that I have here is a function u, of, uh, which is a function of the two variables, x uh, and time. And I want to calculate the second derivative of uh, function u with respect to x. So I'm, I'm defining in some arbitrary uh, partial differential equations that I'm going to solve in here. Okay, equals zero. So this is the partial differential equation that I'm going to solve. So um, when I hit the uh, enter uh, key to execute this command, you can see that the partial differential equation has has been printed um, on the screen now. Okay, so uh, for the partial differential equation, in order to solve them, uh, in order to 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 solve the the partial differential equations numerically, uh, you need to provide uh, uh, the boundary conditions and the initial conditions uh, the, before you can solve them. So uh, I want to define two boundary conditions. Um, but before I do that, uh, let me define the, the maximum uh, integration time. So uh, T max is um, 0 0.05 seconds. And I also want to define the, um, uh, the two boundary of the space that I want to, to, to discretize the partial differential equation as well. So I call it uh, x min, which is 0, and x max, which is. Um, one. Okay, um, and uh, since uh, the techniques that I'm uh, showing you today uh, contains uh, uh, consists of the discretization techniques uh, for which is which are based on finite difference method, collocation method, and Galikin's method. So I'm going to define um, the a, a, a common uh, number of no points that I'm going to use for, for all of this method. So I so n is equal to 6, so n is the number of no points. You can also put a common uh, next to each of these parameters so, we, so that you know what this parameter is for. Number of no points or number of discretization points. So now I can go ahead and define the uh, uh, boundary conditions. So bc1.
So that is the boundary condition at um, x uh, mean. And I want to define a second boundary condition at x max as well. So they're both zero. So this uh, so this two boundary condition means that the derivative of u uh, at x min is zero, and the derivative of x max uh, of, of, of u at x max is uh, zero, which means that the slope of the PDE at x min and x max are both zero. And I also want to define the initial condition as well. So I, I only have one initial condition, which is uh, u at uh, time zero equals um, two. So that is the initial condition for the partial differential equation that I want to solve. So in Maple, there's a command that is called um, uh, BD solve command, which allows you to solve the partial differential equations and plot the partial differential equations directly. So uh, before, so uh, the, so the the name of the command is called PD solve, and you you are going to pass um, the partial differential equations that you have defined uh, above into this command together with the boundary condition and the other options um, that uh, help uh, this command uh, to find the numerical solutions or the symbolic solution uh, of this uh, PDE um, depending, on, depending, depending on how we want to solve it. So I'm going to group, uh, so for this command here, uh, mm -hmm. the, I, I group uh, all the, the boundary conditions and the initial condition in one, in, 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 a, in a list mm -hmm. um, and I will pass um, this into the pd solve command so i'm going to execute this so you can see that i have uh, one initial conditions and two boundary conditions that i have defined above okay and uh, so uh, for the pd solve command i pass the variable pde which is uh, corresponding to the partial differential equations that i defined above here uh, together with boundary condition, I want to solve the PDE numerically, uh, and the time variable is uh, t, and x uh, go from uh, zero to x max, and I have two independent variables, uh, x and time, and the space step I, I want to discretize that uh, 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 by the uh, using uh, a thousands of uh, uh, of the range uh, x max. And the time step is also millisecond as well, so I can just execute that uh, and 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 solve uh, the the PDs that I have defined. So once you solve that, you can store the result into a variable uh, which I call PDS here. And after that, you can call the plot 3D command to to plot uh, the solution. So now I have the plot for the PDs that I have defined. So um, so the axis here. Uh, you can see that we have uh, the x-axis, I have the time axis, and the vertical axis is the the value of the function um, at uh, 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 any particular x and uh, time. Okay, so let me get back to the uh, PowerPoint presentation here. Okay, so uh, uh, so today uh, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, three different techniques uh, for solving partial differential equations. The first method is called finite finite difference method. So it's a very it's a popular method for solving PDEs. It's very easy to use. Uh, but the problem for finite difference method is that it results in a lot of uh, uh, ODEs um, and uh, because of the, the size of the ODEs that uh, uh, resulted from this. Uh, method is uh, very slow to, to, to solve and the two the, the next two techniques are called collocation method and Galikin's techniques so these two methods uh, are the approximation uh, method uh, for, things, for, for solving the partial differential equation and I'm going to get into the details of each of these methods uh, in, in a moment. So um, for the uh, finite difference method uh, we discretize the PDE into a finite number of points uh, and then approximate the derivatives by using the finite difference equation. So the finite difference equation comes in different forms. For example, we can uh, represent the derivative of uh, the function u at node i um, by taking uh, the value of this uh, function at node i plus 1 minus uh, the value of the function at node i, uh, I minus 1. 
uh, divided uh, by its interval between the nodes uh, i plus one and node i minus one. So we have so, so this so this is called the central difference form um, that allows us to convert the PDE. Uh, it allows us to convert the derivative uh, into uh, the uh, finite difference form. Um, and uh, we can also call uh, we, we, we can also use um, the uh, backwards dif uh, to the forward difference form by taking uh, the value of the function u at uh, i plus one minus u uh, at i divided by delta x, which is interval between these two nodes, uh, or the backwards difference form um, by taking uh, uh, by by taking u at i minus u at i minus one divided by delta x as well. So the forward difference form and backward difference uh, equations are very uh, uh, useful for converting the boundary conditions of the partial differential equations into um, the uh, finite difference equations. So uh, yeah, so the, uh, the reason why we have to do this is because um, if you, for example, if you want to approximate the boundary condition at node i uh, on the right hand side, we can't use uh, i plus one since it doesn't exist. So we have to use the uh, backward difference form. So similarly, we have to use the forward difference form uh, for the boundary condition on the left hand side as well. So now let me get back to the maple worksheet. Okay, so for the finite difference method, I have defined um, some procedure here that allows me to convert the PDE into a finite difference equation. So the first uh, procedure here is the central difference form. So you can see that I take u at k plus 1 minus u at k minus 1 divided by 2h. So h uh, here is actually corresponding to delta x on my slide. So h is a, the, 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 the step, the spatial step. So I can just execute this and then you can just see that uh, the result is printed out here. Uh, and I also define the central difference form uh, for the second derivative and also the backward difference expressions and forward difference expression as well. So I'm using the procedure um, command in Maple to do that. And I can also define um, the time, uh, the, the, the spatial, the space step here, um, which is um, I take x max divided by um, by n minus one. So since I have n node points, um, uh, and uh, uh, the two nodes on the on, on, on the boundary also count with this as well. So the the number of intervals would be uh, the the the, the, um, the, uh, the interval would be uh, x max divided by uh, the number of nodes minus one, so which is uh, one divided by five because n is one uh, because x max is one. Uh, so after that, um, after I have defined the uh, procedures uh, for uh, central difference, backward difference, and forward difference, um, I can substitute them into the original PDE uh, using the subs command in Maple. So I replace uh, the second derivative with, this, uh, with the finite difference form, uh, it, with, with, the, with the procedure, and the first derivative with uh, du dr, and u, the function u, um, by uh, u of k, and, and also, uh, so I, I substitute all of this into the original PDE. And it allows me to get uh, an expression that I call a stencil, uh, which is the uh, uh, form of the ODE um, at a uh, at, at, at node k. So by substituting k into this expression, um, this will give me uh, the ODE at any particular node k. So that is exactly what I'm going to do here. Um, so the next step, I also want to use the um, backward difference equations and, and forward difference equation to convert the boundary condition into the finite, finite difference expression as well. And this is what I, I have obtained. So I have obtained two uh, equations uh, based on the boundary conditions that I have. Um, and the next step, I want to define a vector um, to contain the ODEs that I uh, will be obtaining by uh, substituting um, the, the value of k into the stencil function that I, I have achieved up front. So, um, so by doing that, uh, I now uh, have uh, obtained um, the four uh, ODEs for each uh, for the four nodes for the four internal nodes.
Yeah. Okay, so together with the two boundary, with, with the two expressions for the boundary recognition, I have six uh, equations to solve uh, with six variables from u0 uh, until u5. So uh, now I combined uh, all the, the boundary condition equations uh, with the four equations that I have obtained from the stencil equation here. Uh, now I have six equations to solve with six variables and the variables are listed here. So I have six equations with six variables. So these equations are solvable. Uh, but before I, b before I solve this system of uh, DAEs, uh, because they have uh, algebraic expressions and ODEs uh, in this set of equations, um, the, I will need uh, to define the initial condition for each variable. I can do that by uh, using um, the initial condition that is given to me. So I will simply uh, equate um, the, uh, uh, the initial the uh, initial condition for all the variable uh, with uh, the uh, IC uh, with, with the right hand side of the initial conditions that I have defined. So now uh, you can see that the initial condition for all the variables are two. So now I have the initial condition. I have the equations. Um, I can I can simply solve them by using the dissolve by using the dissolve command. Um, and I will solve them numerically uh, and uh, the range that I want to solve them would be between 0 and T max and these are the absolute uh, tolerance and also the relative tolerance for solving this equation as well so um, some of the equations uh, depending on the problems that we have so some parts of the equation can be steep so uh, we can use uh, a steep solver for the robustness of the solution okay so after I solve them um, I can just go ahead and, and use the OD plot command to uh, plot uh, the solution. So this is what I have uh, obtained. So you can see that compared to the true solution that you obtain in, in Maple, um, the uh, accuracy is not really good. So because uh, the, re the reason for this is because I use a very sm small number of, uh, of node uh, points or discretization points. I only use six of them. But if you uh, increase the number of node points, you can uh, the the solution will be the accuracy will become better. Uh, and that is the trade uh, and, and that is the trade off um, uh, when you uh, want to solve the partial differential equ equation using finite difference uh, uh, method. Uh, yeah, so the reason why uh, you, you have to use the finite difference method here because of its uh, simplicity and it also allows you to convert the PDE into the forms that you can handle. For example, uh, once you have converted uh, the PDE into uh, the ODEs, you can uh, s simply uh, make it part of um, other simulation uh, program. Uh, you can put that in the code or you can uh, linearize that uh, or, or whatever analysis that you want on, 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 on the, uh, the PDE, uh, which is something you cannot do by using the Maple uh, command, the, the PDE soft command in Maple. Okay, so now let me get back to the slide again. Um, okay, so the second method that I'm going to talk, be talking about is the uh, uh, collocation method. So the approach to the collocation method is different. Um, so uh, for the collocation method, uh, instead of uh, discretize um, the uh, space uh, in using the finite difference form, uh, uh, for the collocation method, um, we are choosing a finite number of uh, points, so we call the collocation points, along the curve or along the space. So the goal here is um, to find uh, an approximate solution um, that match that matches with the true solution at this collocation point. So there's no guarantee that. Um, so for example, if the uh, blue curve is a true solution and the red curve is the approximate solution, we can for the for the collocation method we can guarantee that um, the uh, red curve would go through this collocation point, but there's no guarantee that uh, it will match with the true solution at uh, any other points other than this uh, collocation points. Okay, so uh, 
to uh, give you more details about how this uh, how, how this can be done, let me uh, go back to the Maple worksheet again. So I have defined some uh, uh, Maple commands here um, that allows me to tackle the partial differential equations that I have defined using uh, the collocation method. So the first step for the collocation method is that you need to choose a basis function. So the basis function can be um, the sh it's a shape function. Uh, so depending on the experience with the PD, you, you might uh, you might know what what uh, shape function would be would would be uh, most appropriate for the PD. Uh, so you can choose that basis function um, so that you can have a, a very uh, accurate solution uh, or very accurate approximation. So. Um, uh, so, uh, so what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm selecting a an, an arbitrary uh, basis function, which is simply a polynomial. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in in fact, uh, the, for the, the problem, you can you can choose um, uh, the some uh, orthogonal uh, polynomial, for example, the Schubert function or the Taylor function or the Legendre polynomials, um, and or, or some or, or even sine and cosine function can be can be good candidate for the basis function as well. Uh, and once you have the basis function, um, you can uh, 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 you, you can just sum them up um, to get uh, to to calculate to, to define the uh, approximate solution. So my approximate solution, which is you had, is simply the sum of all the basis function and uh, the unknown the unknown a function of time, and I call the, I I name the unknown a. Okay, so. Uh, so I, I'm using the same number of nodes as um, in the uh, finite difference method. Okay, so I simply uh, take the sum of uh, a of t, the, the, the sum of the product of a of t and the basis function. So, so this method is also called the uh, uh, variable separation method as well because you can see that the uh, uh, x uh, the domain and the, the time domain are, are separated in this. Um, the, you had. Um, so I have a list of unknown. Uh, let me execute this um, so that you can see uh, the, the result printed out on, on the screen. So the basis function is the x uh, and up, uh, to the power of i and this is my approximate solution. And now I have a list of uh, unknowns that I need to find. So the uh, uh, so the whole I so so the whole purpose of the next command is just to find the uh, this list of unknown. I have six unknowns to find um, from a zero to a five. Okay. So um, uh, we can uh, utilize the two boundary condition to determine the two unknowns. Um, uh, we can do that uh, by uh, simply uh, substitute uh, the uh, about uh, the, the uh, by substituting uh, the uh, boundary condition into u hat, and by doing so, we have achieved uh, um, the we have achieved uh, the two expression for the two unknowns a one and a two. Okay, so by excluding the these two un this these two um, that I call the known uh, the variables, um, I only have four unknowns left. Which are a zero, a three, a four, and a five. Okay. So uh, so now uh, I can substitute uh, the uh, calculated expression for a one and a two into you had um, to achieve um, a uh, uh, an expression for the approximate solution, which is a function of four unknowns only. So now you have a new you had, with which is a function of only four unknowns. And now I have this is now this uh, you had is calculated. I can simply substitute you had into the original PDE to obtain the residual function, and that is exactly what I'm doing here. So now I have the residual function by using the subs command to substitute to replace you uh, at x and time uh, by you had in the PDE. Okay, so now uh, the next step is to choose um, the, the uh, collocation points where we want uh, the approximate solution to match with the true solution. So I'm going to define the space uh, evenly. Uh, so I, I only have, so since I have six no points, but I have two points in the about on, on, on the uh, uh, left and, and, and the right uh, side uh, of the, uh, the space. 
uh, now I only have n minus two points left, and I will divide them uh, evenly. So um, I'm going to use the uh, uh, subs command to to generate um, the four expression um, uh, for the residual equations uh, at the at the four collocation points. Um, so now we have uh, a list of uh, four expression corresponding to the four collocation points. So this is the first expression. The uh, second expression. This is the third expression, and this is the fourth expression. So these uh, four equations are um, are their old ODEs that uh, need to be solved in order to determine the value of the uh, four unknowns. So now we have uh, a list of ODEs to solve. We we uh, and there are, and there are only four unknowns as well. So we can solve. We can, we can you can easily solve these uh, ODEs. But before we solve them, again we need to define the initial condition for all the variables. And we can do so also by using the initial conditions that we have defined as well. So what I'm simply doing here, I, I simply uh, equate, uh, uh, I, I simply substitute uh, time zero into the uh, uh, approximate solution that you had, and then I equate that to um, the initial condition. And this uh, will allow me to um, achieve um, the uh, expressions, there's a list of expressions that allows me to, to calculate, to solve for the initial condition for all, the, for, for all of the unknowns. Okay, so in order to solve for the initial condition for the unknowns, I can, I can use the solve command. Um, and these are the initial condition for the four unknowns. Okay, so now I have uh, the ODEs, I have uh, the initial condition for the unknowns. I can simply use the solve command to solve uh, this expression. It's very uh, straightforward. Um, so uh, what I'm doing here, uh, I'm, I'm not solving these uh, ODEs uh, numerically. I'm solving them uh, symbolically. Uh, so you can see that uh, I, have, uh, I have obtained the, the, the true solution. Uh, for all of the unknown, and this is the solution for a zero, uh, which is purely a function of time. So we, we we don't see x in this expression anymore, and this is expression for a three, uh, and this is the expression for a four, and then a five as well. Okay. Um, so now uh, we have uh, calculated. Uh, the expression for all of the four unknowns. We can substitute them into you had to uh, achieve the, uh, the close uh, solution form uh, for the uh, for, for you had. So so this is the form of you had that we have uh, that, that we have obtained. So this is expression for you had. It is a, a big long equation, but it is only a function of time. So since it is a function of time only. Uh, we can simply call the plot 3D command to. Uh, I'm sorry, you had a function of x and time. So it, it, it is. Uh, so you had a function of uh, x and time. We can we can call the uh, plot 3D command to plot you had, and you can see that the form is very similar to um, the results that we have obtained uh, using the PD solve command in Maple. Uh, and it's, it's much. It looks much better than than the solutions that we we, we, we that we have uh, got uh, based on the finite difference method. So uh, so now we have this uh, the, the approximate solution for the partial differential equations that we want to solve. You can you can simply copy the expression and use that um, yeah, for. Uh, any purpose you can you can do analysis on that you can uh, linearize that or do whatever you want with it so the uh, the last technique that I'm gonna be uh, talking about uh, today is um, the Galekin's method okay so um, the the Galekin's method is very similar to collocation method uh, in the sense that uh, you're gonna be uh, uh, choosing a basis function uh, Usually uh, based on orthogonal polynomials, uh, and and also sine and cosine can also be a good candidate for uh, the basis function as well, depending on the the form of the partial differential equations that we want to solve. 
Uh, however, uh, for the Galligan's method, we are not going to uh, select. Uh, we, we are not going to fit uh, the approximate solution, which is the uh, the, the red uh, curve here, to the two solution at uh, any particular collocation points. Uh, what I'm doing here is that we, we, we can use, uh, so what we can do here is that we can use some kind of optimization techniques, for example, the least squares error, to, uh, to fit uh, the, uh, the approximate solution to the true solution um, uh, along the curve. And let me go back to the Maple worksheet again to um, demonstrate that. So uh, these are the commands that I have uh, typed up uh, uh, which uh, demonstrate how you solve the PDE that I have defined using Galligan's method. So similar to collocation method, you also use, uh, I'm, I'm uh, using uh, an exactly the same basis function here, which is x to the power of i. And I also define uh, u hat, uh, which is approximate solution that I want to find um, uh, by summing up all the basis function um, and, 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 and the product of the basis function with the unknown uh, AFI. So this allows me to uh, obtain um, an expression for the approximate solution. And this, this is the list of the unknowns that I want to find. So, so far, it's uh, all that we have done so far is very similar to what we did using the for the collocation method. And we can also solve for the two unknowns uh, from the boundary condition as well. So I would choose to solve the, for the two unknowns, A1 and A2, uh, based on the boundary conditions. So what I'm doing here, uh, again, I will substitute, um, I, I will calculate uh, the differentiation of U hat with respect to X. And I will equate that to the, bound, to the two boundary conditions. So this uh, gives me, um, the two expression corresponding to the two boundary conditions to solve for the two uh, of the unknowns. Uh, so I will solve for A1 and A2 from these equations. Okay, so this is what I uh, obtained uh, from this solution. So now I have only four unknowns left. So what I have done so far is exactly uh, the same as what you have seen uh, in the collocation method. Okay, and again, I will also, um, I will need to execute this first. So this is a helper function that uh, allows me to define the, um, uh, uh, the time dependent variable into the symbol. So now I have, uh, uh, I have a list of four unknowns. Uh, so what I'm doing here, I uh, also substitute the uh, expression for the two variables that I have calculated for A1 and A2 into you had to obtain uh, a new expression which uh, consists of four unknowns only so now i have four unknowns a0 a3 a4 and a5 uh, similar to what you have seen uh, in the collocation method okay so uh, I'm, I'm calling the procedures that i have defined var to name to uh, convert the variable uh, in, into the symbol so that uh, allows me to 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 calculate the uh, uh, differentiation of you had with respect to um, the uh, unknown a0 to uh, a5 okay, okay so um, so what I'm doing here um, uh, the, the, the main difference between uh, the uh, Galligan's method and the collocation method is that uh, um, for the Galligan's method, uh, because we, we, we don't have any particular uh, collocation points uh, to match our uh, approximate solution to the true solution, we will need uh, we still need to um, define uh, um, the uh, um, uh, the uh, n minus two uh, ODEs yeah, in order to solve. So one way to do that is that we we, we can um, we can calculate the uh, what we call the weighted residual uh, expression. Um, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, because we need four equations to solve, uh, so what I'm doing here is that I uh, will differentiate uh, u hat, uh, which is our approximate solution. To the, uh, the, the with respect to the four uh, unknown a zero, a three, a four, and a five, 
So, um, so what I'm doing here, I call the diff command uh, to differentiate you hat uh, with respect to the four unknowns, and that will give me the four expressions. And this will be the weight that I, w that I will multiply uh, with the residual function to uh, achieve the uh, four expressions that I, um, that I want to, to, to solve. Okay, so uh, uh, the uh, so uh, uh, in order to make uh, the uh, ODEs uh, the setup ODE solvable, um, the ODEs must be independent. So that's the reason why I'm 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 calculating the uh, the weighted residue in, in, instead of just taking the residue because we only have one residue. But now we need uh, the the four ODEs to solve. So uh, the next step, I also substitute. Uh, you had into the original PDE uh, to obtain uh, the residue of function as well. And um, what I'm doing here, uh, which is different from the collocation method, I calculate the weighted residue. So I, I take the product of the residue um, with uh, you had div, uh, which, is the di which is the differentiation of you had with respect to the four unknowns. And that will give me the four expression. Okay, so this, uh, so the four expression here, um, so this is, uh, I can show you, uh, let me separate them. So this is one expression, um, this is the second one, this is the third expression, and this is the fourth one. Um, so all of these four expressions are the function of all of the unknowns and uh, x. So we need to eliminate x from this expression uh, in order to solve them. So one way to do that is that we can um, integrate, uh, we can take the integral of all of this expression uh, from x uh, between 0 and x max. So this will allow us to eliminate x from all of this expression. So that is exactly what I'm doing here. Okay, so I, I call the int command uh, and I will integrate the left hand side of all the weighted residual expression. Uh, from x uh, between 0 and x max and I do that for all of them uh, and this uh, will allow me to eliminate x from all of the four expressions so they are now only um, so so the expressions that I have here are the ODEs um, and they are the function of the four nodes only so this is 1, 2, uh, 3 and 4 Okay, so now I have four uh, ODEs with the four unknowns. I can solve them. Uh, but before I solve them again, I need to calculate the initial condition as well. So in order to calculate the initial condition for all of the variables, um, I also uh, uh, the multiply the, uh, the initial condition to um, to to the uh, uh, to the differentiate to, to the differentiation of uh, of you had. Uh, with respect to each unknown, and I will integrate this uh, express this, the, uh, the initial condition expression as well, um, and that which will give me this. So I can solve them, and that will give me uh, the initial condition for all of the unknowns. Okay, so now I have the set of ODE, I have the initial condition for all of the variables. I can easily solve them using the dissolve command in, in Maple. Um, I choose to solve them uh, symbolically. I, I choose to solve for the closed form solution of this uh, unknown so that I can substitute them into um, the into U hat uh, to achieve the closed form solution for U hat. So this is what I have achieved for uh, U hat. So u hat is a function of uh, x and time. Uh, I can plot this uh, uh, solution uh, by using the plot 3D command. Again, uh, you can see that the plot now looks very, uh, very similar to um, what I have seen uh, using the pdsolve command. Okay, so. Um, so uh, for the rest of the presentation, let me show you uh, one of the, uh, the real-life example where I applied uh, one of these techniques to solve uh, the, the uh, partial differential equations governing uh, the battery model. 
so uh, so what what you see on the screen right now um, uh, is uh, the, uh, the anatomy for uh, a lithium ion battery. So as uh, the two equations that you see on the top are the two chemical reactions for the lithium uh, is that happens inside the lithium ion battery. Uh, which uh, moves the lithium ion uh, ac across the two electrodes. Uh, so this uh, lithium ion battery model is uh, it described by a set of uh, partial differential equations. For example, uh, this partial differential equation defines um, the, uh, the solid phase and, and uh, the second equation describes the liquid phase transport of lithium ion from one uh, the electrode to another. And we also have some other partial differential equations that describe the distribution of uh, electrical potential um, across uh, the two electrodes as well. And we also have uh, an algebraic expression um, which uh, kind of relate all of these uh, variables together. So it is a very complicated system to, uh, system equation to solve. Um, so uh, so what I'm so what I'm doing here is that I, I, I apply the Galikin's technique. Um, so so uh, uh, the approach that I'm using here, uh, I'm, I'm choosing a basis function similar to what you have seen um, um, the, in the Maple worksheet that, 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 I, that, I, that I just showed you. Um, so the basis function that I'm choosing here is uh, a cosine function. So I carefully choose this cosine function so that it uh, satisfies the, uh, all the boundary conditions that I have for this partial differential equations. And after that, I can def also define the approximate solution, uh, which is basically, again, the sum of uh, um, all the uh, shift functions alpha um, and the uh, so product of alpha uh, with eta. Eta is um, the unknown, uh, the, which is a time-dependent variable that I want to solve for. Uh, and I also um, uh, added to this equation um, is, is a, 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 a term that is called CEO, uh, which is the initial condition uh, for um, uh, the partial differential equation as well. So, so the, uh, so the uh, approximate solution that I have defined here uh, will uh, satisfy both the boundary condition and the initial condition at the same time. And, uh, uh, so, uh, f for the Galikin's method, uh, since I'm applying the Galikin's method here, uh, I will substitute the trial function into this uh, PDE. Uh, that will give me uh, the residual function, uh, which is in this format. And once you uh, have uh, obtained the uh, residual function, uh, you can just go. You, you can use uh, the least squares error um, to. Uh, um, uh, Optimize uh, to equate this residual function or, or the weighted residual function to zero, and that will uh, give me a list of ODs that um, I, I can solve uh, uh, numerically. And once you uh, uh, have done that, you can uh, you can solve the resulting ODs that you have obtained uh, using the Galikin's technique, and you can plot the three D surface like this. So the first so the surface that you see here is for the concentration of lithium ion in in uh, liquid phase. And you can also plot uh, the other surface as well for the other partial differential equations. And uh, so, uh, for the rest of the presentation, let me just take a few seconds to uh, to talk a little bit about our uh, physical modeling tool, MapleSim. So, MapleSim is our physical modeling tool. Uh, so, it has uh, a it has a, uh, a a collection of very rich. Uh, library uh, which basically cover many uh, physical domains including electrical, mechanical, uh, thermal, uh, magnetic uh, and, and other domains as well. Um, so uh, maple seam sits on top of maple uh, so it, it, it uh, uh, take advantage so it takes advantage of the, uh, the symbolic capability of, of the maple solver. Uh, and you can do a lot of uh, things with, with maple seam. For example, you can bring the equation uh, from maple into maple seam and build the component and um, integrate that with a larger system. For example, a complete, uh, for example, you can bring the battery equation from maple into maple seam and then you can build the battery pack for uh, your EV, HV application as well. Uh, uh, and um, on the, on, on the right hand side you see here is actually the maple worksheet that I use to, to tackle the, the battery equations. 
and on the left hand side uh, it's the battery pack that I created the maple seam so it's simple it's a simple battery pack that consists of only four cells and uh, and once you define the battery component you can also uh, uh, define the list of parameters that I want to change from the maple seam GUI and in the middle is the list of parameters that I have defined here so so once you build a met battery pack like this in maple seam you can discharge the, uh, that with a with a current uh, or you can put, uh, or, or you can integrate the battery component uh, with uh, your EV or, or HEV system, uh, and then put that uh, to a drive cycle. So you can see uh, the changes of the battery thermal and voltage um, when the, uh, the during the normal operation of the vehicle. So the plot that you see here is. Uh, uh, obtained when I discharge the battery pack uh, that we have seen in the in, in the previous slide uh, by power current, and uh, the battery model also uh, account for the, uh, uh, the the different kind of material as well. So you can also plot the voltage uh, by the, when you change the the cathode out of material, and it it also account for the uh, thermal effects as well. Um, and uh, this plot is achieved uh, by charging the battery uh, with the different current. So you can see that when you charge that with a higher current, uh, the temperature will rise much faster. And uh, this plot shows uh, the battery temperature, uh, the, the rise uh, in the, the temperature inside the battery um, the, for different uh, cathode material, so uh, you, you can see that uh, lithium cobalt dioxide has much uh, less uh, thermal stability compared to the other kind of two uh, cathode material, which are lithium manganese oxide and lithium iron phosphate. So that's why these two materials are getting very popular uh, for EV and HV applications. Okay, and you can also build a, uh, a, a, a larger system, for example, a thermal runaway model for battery pack. Uh, based on um, uh, the battery models developed uh, based on uh, the Galekin's methods that I have uh, showed you. Okay, um, so uh, MapleSIM is a, a truly uh, unique physical modeling tool. Um, so it's uh, based on the foundation of symbolic computation technology. It is based on a Maple engine and it can handle all the complex mathematics uh, in, uh, involved in the development of engineering models very well, um, thanks to the symbolic Maple engine. So uh, MapleSIM is a uh, multi-domain system, it, which means that uh, you, can, you can have a uh, uh, component from many different domains, for example, electrical, mechanical, thermal, and magnetic domain in one single model and solve all of them together. Uh, and although MapleSIM itself uh, is um, a, a problem solver, it, it can solve the problem uh, in, in one single environment. It, you can also leverage the power of Maple uh, and take advantage of the extensive analytic, anal analytical tools in Maple. Uh, for example, the optimization package in Maple and other, MAP and, and, uh, other 5,000 Maple commands uh, to do any kind of analysis that you want. And it also allows you to reduce the model development time from month to day while producing high fidelity and high performance models as well.